Marnock manager Tommy Burns celebrates a year in the job tomorrow with a game which could go a long way to decide if his team step up with Wraith, Ro Wraith Rovers to the Premier Division next season. With only four games left, three points separate the teams. Dunfermline travel to Meadowbank, but the match of the day is at Love Street, where St Mirren entertain Killy. Chick Young reports. It's the last throw of the dice for St Mirren in the promotion race, but victory at Love Street would throw them back into the frame. Despite suggestions from certain cynics that it's too early for Jimmy Bowen's young team to step up. He played six teenagers in the victory over Dunfermline last week, but the Paisley boss works on the theory that if you're good enough, then you're old enough for the big time. Honestly, we'd love to go up because even things like the ground improvements, if we were a Premier League club, we'd get so much more money from the trust people than what we would do for the first division. So right away we're going to, we would gain financially be going up. And we as a club are absolutely desperate. Me as a manager. Uh, I'm ambitious. I would love to get up. Uh, sooner the better. But Kelly too are desperate for a return to the Premier Division and as leaders of the group chasing Wraith Rovers, they call the shots. And Tommy Burns, a year into the job, knows what the stakes are tomorrow at Paisley. If we don't get promotion then I think uh, I would look on that as failure. But uh, I think we'll give the club uh, credibility back. Uh, we'll certainly put out an entertaining team. Uh, we've played very, very good football this season. So from that point of view, we've been success. Um, but again, uh, the way the football is nowadays, uh, you're only judged on, on what you win. Let's look at the relevant results. Firstly, Hamilton Ackies are leading Morton by two goals to one. Wraith Rovers already champions, of course, 4-1 up in Cowden Beath. But as you can see, the Dunfermline are leading at Meadowbank through a Hamish French goal. And St Mirren are leading Kilmarnock 2-1 and a game which has attracted a crowd of 8,102. To Love Street, Kilmarnock going ahead through Ali Mitchell, but goals by Eddie Gallagher and John Hewitt have put St Mirren 2-1 up. And they are very much still in the hunt if it stays like that. And then the very first match ever to be played at Stirling Arbin's new fourth bank, Stadium. Albion are 3-2 down to Clyde Bank. Kennedy has scored twice and Albion of course want to stay at fourth bank as a first division club next season. And against Kilmarnock from Alistair Morning. Full time score at Love Street St Mirren 2, Kilmarnock 1. It really was a game of two halves as Kilmarnock's promotion challenge will wilted under St Mirren's aggressively skillful play. Kilmarnock started fast and furious taking the game to St Mirren but in spite of that pressure they created only one chance when Tommy Burns put Ali Mitchell in the clear, but the striker's finishing was poor. Killy were certainly looking favourites to score as they exploited St Mirren's lack of composure, but it took the Ayrshire club until the 42nd minute to convert that pressure. Sean McSkimming sent a measured cross to Ali Mitchell standing just inside the box, and he hit the ball in the volley straight into the net for his fourth goal in fourth games. But master tactician Jimmy Bowen had a surprise in store for Kilmarnock. He brought on McIntyre and Eddie Gallagher in double substitution move, and it was super sub Gallagher who turned the game Saints' way. When he headed home, a David Elliott corner in 54 minutes. The game swung even more St Mirren's way after that. 15 minutes, they went into the lead. They were awarded a free kick 25 yards out. Veteran John Hewitt stepped up and hit a superb curling shot round the wall into the top half left left-hand corner. It, this was a tribute to St Mirren's commitment and to the 8,000 fans that turned up. Final score at Love Street, St Mirren 2, Kilmarnock 1. And that uh, really could have dealt a, a very fatal or a fatal blow to Kilmarnock's uh, hopes. And Fernand now two points clear in second place on 51 points. Kilmarnock on 49, St Mirren on 48, Hamilton Eckes on 47, all with three matches to go. And there's a confirmation of that scoreline from Love Street just going through. St Mirren 2, Kilmarnock 1. Bolton Wanderers going well in the English second division. No Andy Walker, of course, he's been such a good signing for them. Scored a lot of goals this season. He's uh, sadly out. Tommy Burns was always good at carving out chances. The passing of the years has not affected his passing ability. It deserved a better finish from Ali Mitchell on this occasion. Squandering chances does nothing for your promotion challenge, but Killy didn't learn their lesson. A good passing move ending with Sean McSkimming firing wildly over the top. St Mirren have an outside chance of promotion themselves. Their best effort of the first half came when John Hewitt tried a snapshot, which was saved by Bobby Geddes. And from his clearance, Kilmarnock went up the park and scored. McSkimming the central figure, making ground down the left and crossing for Ali Mitchell to make it 1-0.
Kelly then went in search of a second, George McCluskey combining with Burns and McSkimming to set up Mitchell again, but it wasn't to be, the volley on the turn a bit too adventurous. St Mirren had brought on Eddie Gallagher at half-time, and it was his substitute who got the equaliser, his diving header at the near post beating Geddes. Killy were still making chances and wasting them. The ball eventually worked to the unmarked Dougald McCarrison here. But into the crowd it went. Then St Mirren were almost gifted the lead. There was no real pressure on Montgomery, but he took his eye off the ball and had Geddes scrambling. And then the moment which led to St Mirren's winner, Craig Patterson conceding a free kick for climbing on Barry Lovetti. He didn't like the decision, but John Hewitt did, and he promptly made the most of it. For the second week running, Saints had come back from a goal down to take the lead, but they almost then threw it away. Killy attacking from the restart, Bobby Williamson hitting the side netting after running clear of Les Fridge. Killy's frustration was becoming clear and it boiled over when Hewitt took the heels from Mitchell and both ended up in the boot. The last chance of this match fell to St Mirren. Barry Lavetti running through and going alone, but Geddes made the save and it finished 2-1 St Mirren. Tommy Burns was always good at carving out chances. The passing of the years has not affected his passing ability. It deserved a better finish from Ali Mitchell on this occasion. Squandering chances does nothing for your promotion challenge, but Killy didn't learn their lesson. A good passing move ending with Sean McSkimming firing wildly over the top. St Mirren have an outside chance of promotion themselves. Their best effort of the first half came when John Hewitt tried a snapshot, which was saved by Bobby Geddes. And from his clearance, Kilmarnock went up the park and scored. McSkimming the central figure, making ground down the left and crossing for Ali Mitchell to make it 1-0. Killy then went in search of a second, George McCluskey combining with Burns and McSkimming to set up Mitchell again, but it wasn't to be, the volley on the turn a bit too adventurous. St Mirren had brought on Eddie Gallagher at half time, and it was his substitute who got the equaliser, his diving header at the near post beating Geddes. Killy were still making chances and wasting them. The ball eventually worked to the unmarked Dougald McCarrison here. But into the crowd it went. Then St Mirren were almost gifted the lead. There was no real pressure on Montgomery, but he took his eye off the ball and had Geddes scrambling. And then the moment which led to St Mirren's winner, Craig Patterson conceding a free kick for climbing on Barry Lovetti. He didn't like the decision, but John Hewitt did, and he promptly made the most of it. For the second week running, Saints had come back from a goal down to take the lead, but they almost then threw it away. Killy attacking from the restart, Bobby Williamson hitting the side netting after running clear of Les Fridge. Killy's frustration was becoming clear and it boiled over when Hewitt took the heels from Mitchell and both ended up in the boot. The last chance of this match fell to St Mirren. Barry Lavetti running through and going alone but Geddes made the save and it finished 2-1 St Mirren. <laughs> 